Issue 167 After Linda brags to Dimitri 25 years later about her evening, she says she had a hand in bringing down the line of Edmund. How? That would require bringing down Knuckles, which she didn't do. She got Lair arrested, but not Knuckles. Dimitri shows that even in the alternate timeline, he's had a heel face turn, saying, You are despicable, Linda. I have not been this ashamed of my bloodlines as I worked with Dr. Phanatibus, which he did apparently. So, spoilers. Being overheard by a sad looking Rutan, which made me think that he was going to factor into the plot somehow. She breaks that the only three who could change how things are now are locked away. Naturally, Rotor says to the overly optimistic Sonic and Tails, how can you all joke at a time like this? Good, because they were really annoying me with their unrealistically optimistic behavior. Then Knuckles actually frees them all, out of nowhere, implying that the reason they were all so optimistic was because they actually had faith that Knuckles would do this. Except Lara because she was talking like he wouldn't. He surprises Lara, saying to her that he couldn't be prouder, and he never really arrested them for real. This is nice, but still surprising. Tail says that he'll hack into the castle system and make sure he and Knuckles have a clear path. Wait, what system? Security system? Anyways, Tail says that he, I guess it means Knuckles, will get Sally to safety so the monarchy remains somewhat stable. Why did he specify that when he doesn't have to? It's obvious he'd save her for more than just that. And that leaves Shadow for Sonic. Knuckles is pleased that, as he was hoping, Lara had been listening in. But she was right there the whole time. Wouldn't it have been obvious to everyone she could hear what Tails was saying? Lara's disappointed when her task is merely to get Rhoda to the hospital instead of taking part in the action, since she's a tomboy and a powerful guardian. And Knuckles reassures her that the role of a guardian is to protect people, not just fight. Again, she reminds me of Korra. Korra had to learn that lesson too. She was all about fighting. Rhoda then points out when she carries him that she has her father's super strength. And Lara says, good thing, too. Knuckles says, I'm turning against my own forces. I can't help but feel guilty. Which is good, establishing what a conscience he has. And Sonic snarks, somehow I don't think they'll hold it against you. Because he's an admired guardian, or because they hate King Shadow? Sally walks over to Knuckles after being asked to. He's surprised that he knows about the other timeline. How would she know about it when she wasn't near the tachyon chamber when it was used? Shadow then reminds everyone that with Chaos Control, he's a master of time and space. This obviously means he wipes the floor with Sonic, while cruelly insulting him for aging while he never ages. Then Lara Sue shows up to fight Shadow as well, at least getting an extra number in there. This makes sense as long as she got Rotor to the hospital. She taunts Shadow by not effortlessly beating her by now, which he should have logically done by just freezing time. Really that ability of his in the first place makes it ridiculous that he didn't win every fight instantly. Lara brags that she has green fire chaos powers too and then uses Chaos Control to free Shadow in place. Then she says, I don't think my great-great-great-grandkids will have to worry. Well, that was really easy. I wish I knew how long she's been training at her magical powers, because while I'm really glad she's so good at them now, making her useful, it comes completely out of complete nowhere when she wasn't using them at all until recently. The only guardian power she showed before this point was her floating pebbles. She reassures her worried father that all she has is a little burn, and he tells her that while her mother's gonna flip from worry, she'll be so proud, and he adorably hugs her while she says, Thanks, Daddy. Meanwhile, Sally says, happy to be back with Sonic again, that Knuckles explained everything to her, and she knew something was wrong for all those years, but was never sure what. That doesn't make sense, either she'd remember the old timeline or she wouldn't. Naturally, she says that she never loved Shadow, and she married him to bring stability to Mobius and try to tame him somewhat. The story ends with Sonic lampshade and he sounds forward at how he's immediately asking Sally to have kids to get Sonya Manic back. I'm surprised this King Shadow story was finished so damn fast. I thought for sure it'd be a whole story arc, but I wasn't counting on Lara Sue being able to beat Shadow. It's nice that it didn't drag out, it was just surprising that it ended so fast. I'm still left with the glaring unanswered question of how simply sending Sonic back in time at all caused the world not to end from core instability caused by events he couldn't have prevented to good effect. Not to mention how the hell Sonic either got back or... No, he must have gotten back with some other time machine because he'd look way older if he went back in time than had to wait 25 years to get to this point. So, 
those gaping plot holes were just left as the impending apocalypse was swept under the rug, along with what caused things to get so bad between Sonic and Tails. So it's like they didn't really properly transition from Penders' 25 years later to Ian Flynn's. It doesn't really feel properly connected to it. I really hope I'm wrong in assuming this and they actually will at least explain that last thing. Because right now it feels like they left some pretty obvious dangling plot threads. So I guess that's my summary right there. It was written by Ian Flynn and it was good. Oh yeah, there's also a backup story by Romy Chaka and I almost forgot about it. Basically, the kind of, the problem it has is that it's too repetitive because it's about Sonic having a recurring dream where he goes to a bonus ceremony about his birthday. Wait, so what's it that he had another birthday? Because he only got one birthday celebrated after he came back from being in space. Or is this really a bonus birthday celebration, where it's like he gets two birthdays celebrated? But anyways, it's, it's repetitive because it literally repeats the same text from the person talking on Sonic's radio over and over and over again. And it even has the same artwork repeated too. I get it because it's supposed to be about Sonic constantly having a dream that he ends up in the hospital, after he sleeps in and, and misses his own ceremony. But it just bo it's just boring and repetitive because of all of that like repetition. Like at the very least he does seem to learn his lesson as after all of that recurring dream stuff or wait, was any of that landing in the hospital stuff canon? Or was it all just a dream? A dream within a dream within a dream. It's 